The 1.9 and 2.4 litre diesel engines are well proven Volkswagen power units that have been updated for the new transporter. Due to certain engine modifications, it's now no longer necessary to retighten the cylinder head bolts at the first service. Also new, to reduce vibration and improve driving comfort, is this accelerator cable with integral damper. The fuel delivery circuits of both engines are fitted with a pre-warming system. This helps to reduce the risk of fuel waxing in the filter assembly during winter conditions. The filter, as usual, is fitted with a water drain tap, which should be drained periodically. Corrections to the idle speed are carried out by this screw on the four-cylinder engine and this one on the five-cylinder engine. To check the injection timing, which should always be done after replacing the cam belt, you can use a dial gauge as in previous models. Or alternatively, when the timing figure is available, the latest electronic equipment. This equipment can be used on any diesel engine where the dynamic timing figure is known. The dynamic timing setting can usually be found in the Emission and Idling data book. To use the equipment, connect the red and black clamps to the battery and the reference sender to the hole in the bell housing. The transducer should be fitted to number one injector pipe. Choose a straight section of pipe at least 20 millimeters long and make sure it's clean by polishing it with fine emery paper and a cloth. Fit the transducer as near to the pump as possible and connect the lead. Don't rotate or slide the transducer as this will damage the delicate sensor. The large clamp should be connected to a convenient engine earth. Ensure the engine is at operating temperature and all prerequisites described in the data book have been met. Start the engine and allow it to idle for about a minute. The injection timing, displayed in degrees and RPM figures, can now be checked against the specifications. Remember, the idle speed affects the injection timing, so correct the idle RPM before checking the timing. Corrections to the timing are, as usual, made by moving the pump. For checking vehicles that are not fitted with a flywheel sensor, a timing light is provided. The light is switched on by pressing the lower button, while operating the upper switch will appear to move the timing marks relative to one another. Press the switch until the reference mark and the TDC mark are aligned. The actual dynamic timing figure will now be displayed in the window and can be compared with the specifications. For a more detailed explanation, consult the literature provided with the equipment. A new type of cooling fan system to reduce engine noise and improve warm-up is fitted to the diesel models. A series of plastic vanes enclose the radiator fans. The vanes are controlled by a wax thermostat that reacts to the engine compartment temperature. When cold, the vanes are closed, so reducing engine noise and airflow. As the temperature increases, the thermostat progressively opens the vanes to allow the normal airflow through the radiator. The electric fans themselves are controlled by a number of relays to provide two-speed operation. Two fusible links, also for the fans, are located under the bonnet behind the left-hand headlight.
Removal of the engine and transmission assembly of all models is carried out by lowering the units down from underneath. To ease removal and replacement, some of the control cables are in two sections. This allows them to be quickly disconnected without disturbing their settings. To remove only the gearbox assembly, the engine must first be swivelled forward. A special tool required to support the engine is fastened to the subframe and engine block. After slackening and removing the necessary components, including the left-hand drive shaft, the engine can be pulled forward using the screw thread. Further information can be found in the repair literature. The new transporter is fitted with a new design of front suspension. It consists of longitudinal torsion bars with double wishbones and telescopic shock absorbers. The front suspension design provides good ride and handling characteristics and allows more room inside the vehicle. Also new for the transporter is a variable ratio rack and pinion steering. This provides high gearing in the straight ahead position for a more positive feel and low gearing in either lock for ease of parking. However, good handling characteristics can only be maintained if the steering geometry settings are within their tolerances. So let's have a look at the various adjustment points. The camber setting is adjusted by rotating the eccentric plate on the top ball joint after first slackening this locking bolt. Caster angle can be corrected by turning this eccentric washer on the rear of the lower wishbone. Before checking the track, ensure the steering is set to its central position by aligning these marks. Corrections to the track should be made by adjusting both rods equally. Vehicles with power steering should have the fluid level checked with the steering in the straight ahead position and the engine idling. An oil cooler for the power steering is located under the radiator. The rear suspension, which is similar to the old transporter, is only provided with adjustment points for the track. The track can be corrected by moving the inner mounting of the semi-trailing arm after slackening the bolt. However, note this important point. Any alteration to the track will affect the setting of the brake pressure regulator, as these two springs connect the regulator to the trailing arms. The twin-circuit servo-assisted brakes, combining discs at the front and drums at the rear, are diagonally linked. Two types of front brake caliper are used, dependent on the road wheel size and model. This frame-type caliper with ventilated disc is fitted to vehicles with the larger road wheels, and the well-known floating caliper is used on the other models. Replacement of the brake pads is similar to previous models. For example, on this type of caliper, it's simply necessary to remove the spring clip and tap out the retaining pins. As we already know, the rear brakes are controlled by a new type of regulator. It regulates the rear brakes depending on vehicle load, brake pressure and any body roll as the vehicle corners. 
A detailed description of its operation is included in the self-study book. The regulator's adjustment procedure is quite involved and, of course, most important, so refer to the workshop literature for details. The new transporter's electrical system follows the design of the Passat vehicles and is therefore fitted with the latest type of relay plate and wiring looms. Relays for wipers, fuel pump, indicators and starter X relief circuit can be found here, while the engine digifan control unit is situated under the bonnet. Don't forget, to remove a wiring multiplug from this type of relay plate, you must first slide the locking bar to release the plug. Additional control units for electric windows and auxiliary heater, etc., will be located above the glove box area. Incidentally, the new low oil pressure warning buzzer is located inside the instrument panel. To remove the instrument panel, it's first necessary to remove the steering wheel and column switches. Next, take out the two retaining screws and pull the instruments around forward. The instrument panel itself is secured by two Phillips screws and the speedometer cable is held in place by a plastic clip. The instrument panel can be checked by using the VAG 1598 test box and adapter 1598 stroke 8 in conjunction with the multimeter and electrical system manual. To remove a loudspeaker grill, it's necessary to first pull out the fresh air grill. Next, remove the vent securing screw and pull the vent out while releasing the plastic clips. Now slide the inner vent over to one side to give you a little more room. The plastic catches which retain the speaker grill can now be released while lifting it upwards. The inner edge of the speaker grill should be lifted first as the outer edge is secured by small hooks. The interior door panels are of a new design and consequently require a different removal technique. Take off the grab handle window winder and lock button. The door handle need not be removed as it's automatically disengaged as the panel is lifted off. Remove the Phillips screw from the front of the panel and this plastic Allen bolt. Now lift the panel upwards to disengage its retaining hooks from the door. Don't attempt to pull the panel outwards as this will break the plastic hooks. This new type of moulded panel alleviates the need for a polythene protection sheet fitted to previous models. 
Before refitting the panel, ensure these rubber packing pieces are in place. The door mirrors have a special lock, which allows them to be turned inwards when driving through narrow spaces. To return them to the original position, ease the mirror forwards while releasing the catch. The glass can be replaced separately by pulling it firmly outwards off its mountings. To refit it, align the glass and press it fully home. These small marks on the windscreen are a guide to help you correctly position the wiper arms when refitting them. Removal of a front indicator lamp is also very simple. Using a thin bladed screwdriver, ease the plastic retaining clip to one side while pulling the lamp out. The rear fog lamp is also removed in a similar way. The sliding door, which is of a new design, has a number of adjustment points. They can be found on the lower front hinge, rear hinge, and door catches. Check in the repair manual for the precise details. Finally, just in case you need to open the tailgate from the inside, a small catch is provided. So, the new Transporter offers an attractive, practical and versatile vehicle with low maintenance requirements, which the van customer obviously expects. We therefore hope that you'll play your part in ensuring its success by maintaining it to the highest possible standards.